I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church, and I want to welcome you to join us in the Word of God today. Today, my wife Hilary is going to share on the subject of healing. And she's experienced God's healing power many times. And she's going to share today one of the most important keys to receiving your healing from God, and that is God's will concerning healing. You know, healing is God's love applied to our bodies. And today, Hillary's going to share how much God loves you and how much he wants to heal you. So listen carefully and get ready to receive God's word. Tonight, I want to share with you just how much Jesus wants to heal you. Let me tell you the, the account of a man who was diagnosed with a fatal disease. Death was absolutely certain for him. The accounts appear in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and I've put the three accounts together. And it came to pass when he, Jesus, was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face, and he besought him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said to him, I will. Be thou clean. And as soon as Jesus had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed and the man was cleansed. And Jesus strictly charged him, saying, Tell no man, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing according to Moses, commanded for a testimony to them. This is such an amazing story. Let me describe to you the symptoms of leprosy. Because in this day and age in England, we tend really not to have any clear idea of what leprosy was like and how horrendous it was. Literally, with a person with leprosy, their flesh is decaying on their live body. For instance, a leprous man with advanced leprosy could rub his eye and find that his eyelid had gone. Or he could find that in, when he woke up in the morning, he'd lost some of his fingers. They literally crumble and decay. And so I wanted to describe to you the law of concerning leprosy in Leviticus. Let's turn together to Leviticus chapter 13, and I'm going to read from verses 44 to 46. And it says, He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be torn, his head bare, he shall put a covering over his upper lip. You know, all the Israelites did this when they were in mourning for the dead. The leper was to proclaim that he was as good as dead. Can you imagine what that was like for that poor man or woman? And he shall cry, unclean, unclean. This was so that people could stay far away from him. And many times if people thought a leper was too close to them, they would throw stones at them. What a terrible thing to happen. And he had to shout, unclean, unclean, all the days wherein the plague shall be in him. This man shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall live alone. He had to leave his, leave his family and go and live with other leprous people. He had to live outside the camp where his home used to be. The leper was a total outcast. And I wanted to tell you the story just as though it's happening right now. Can you imagine? Let's call the man Joseph. Joseph, one morning, he wakes up and he sees on his hand those terrible telltale marks on his skin. And he thinks, oh no, I must be wrong. Maybe it, it'll go away. And for days he's in an agony. He sees his beloved family and he wants to stay with them. But he realizes that this disease is so contagious. And so he's so reluctant to leave. And he's heartbroken. And one day he realizes he has to go to the priest. And then he goes to the priest, who is like the doctor, and he hears the dreaded diagnosis. You do have leprosy. You are unclean. You have to leave and go outside the camp. And when he heard that, terrible diagnosis his heart sank and he knew that he was as good as dead and with great sorrow he said goodbye to his children thinking he'd never ever see them again his beloved wife it was tearing at his heart 
This man was sentenced to death. He was poverty-stricken. He was a man who was despised. Neighbours wouldn't want anything to do with him. And outside the camp, living in the leprous colony, he was face to face with the very disease he had uh, with the early onset. He was seeing the advanced stages. He was seeing what would become of him. And the end result was always, always death. But he heard about Jesus. What amazing news. And this man was so desperate to get to Jesus, he broke through all the rules and he came near a whole man. It says that when he saw Jesus, he came to him and he fell on his face and he begged him and he worshipped him. He said, Lord, if you want to heal me, you can. What he was saying, the literal translation is literally, if you really want to heal me, you can make me whole, you can cleanse me. And he prostrated himself, he humbled himself before the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see, he knew that Jesus could heal him, but he really wasn't sure whether Jesus wanted to heal him. Now what was Jesus' response when this man said to him, Lord, if you really want to heal me, you can. Jesus said, as he reached out and touched him, now you know he didn't have to touch him. Jesus could have just used the word. But Jesus, in his mercy and compassion, he knew that that man needed a touch of love. It was probably the first touch from a whole man the man had received since knowing he had leprosy. And his disease was advanced because Luke tells us the man was full of leprosy. You see, whole people never touch lepers. And Jesus, as I said, didn't have to touch him, but he did. And Jesus said, as he touched him, I really want to heal you. Be thou made clean. And it said, as soon as Jesus spoke, immediately the leprosy left the man. And Jesus charged the man strictly. And he said, don't talk to anyone on the way. Go to the priest and show yourself to him and make the required sacrifice according to the law of Moses so that it will be a testimony to them. What was the testimony? That the Messiah had come. Let me read to you um, the law concerning the cleansing of a leper. You will find this in Leviticus chapter 14 verses 1 to 7. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look and behold, really look, if the plague of the leprosy be healed in the leper. Then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean, cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, the priest shall take it, the cedar wood, scarlet and hyssop, and shall dip them in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. Then he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. Let me explain. These two live birds, this is a description of what Jesus would do for us. The one killed in an earthen vessel. The earthen vessel is a picture of Jesus in his humanity. And so this bird was killed over fresh water, running water. The running water is a picture of the Holy Spirit in regeneration. And the living bird is us. It's a picture of you and me. And this living bird was dipped into the blood of the sacrificed bird. Now the sacrificed bird, as I'm sure you've realized by now, is the picture of Jesus on the cross. And the cleansed leper is to be sprinkled seven times. Why seven? This is a picture of salvation, of our redemption. Seven is the number of absolute perfection. And it tells us in verse 7, and the priest shall let the living bird go free into the open field. 
we are that living bird that has been dipped, plunged into the redeeming blood of the Messiah. And his blood has cleansed and healed us of all our diseases. Let's turn to the account of the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. This is, I wanted you to turn to Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 16. When Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying sick of a fever. Now Luke's account tells us that it was a great and burning fever. You know, I saw my darling mother um, with a great and burning fever. Believe me, it is a terrible thing to behold. Very stressful, a horrid thing. And you get the shakes and delirious and some people can die from it. This woman was very, very seriously ill. And Jesus came in and he touched her hand. And other accounts say that he rebuked the fever. I believe he did both. And as he touched and rebuked the her and rebuked the fever, the fever left her. Immediately she got up and she started waiting at table. She served him. Now the result of this healing, I mean the news spread like wildfire. And it says in verse 16, when evening came, they brought to him many that were under the power of demons. He drove out the spirits with a word and he restored to health all who were sick. And Matthew now quotes Isaiah as the basis for this healing. Um, verse 17, the last latter part of it, it says, Thus he, Jesus, fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And there it quotes, He himself took, and that word took means in order to carry away our, not their, but our infirmities and infirmities of weaknesses and sicknesses and bore away our diseases. That is what Jesus was going to do on the cross. Isaiah that was quoted by Matthew was written 600 years before this time. Now onlookers when they saw Jesus dying on a cross they saw just a good man dying an agonizing death. Absolute failure but God was doing something marvelous for us. There was amazing victory on the cross. Our healing was purchased. It was purchased for everyone, for all generations. And Isaiah describes what was happening in the realm of the unseen spirit. Let's read Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 to 5. This is speaking of Jesus. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was laid. That laid was a, a, a heavy blow. Was laid upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Physical healing. It says surely he has borne. The Hebrew word is nasa which means to suffer as in punishment, to take it away. He has borne our griefs. The word there in Hebrew is koli. The other word can be chala. Koli means sickness. Chala means to be weak, to be sick and afflicted. And in all other cases, it has been translated as sick, weak and afflicted. And so we see that he carried away. The carried there is sabal, sabal. I'm not pronouncing it properly, I think. But it's to bear something as in punishment. And the emphasis is on the weight of it. And it says that he carried our sorrows. And the Hebrew word is makob, which literally means pain. 
In all other instances in, in the Old Testament, it's been translated as pain. And now we go down to verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace. That word is shalom. And that means literally nothing missing, nothing broken. The chastisement for our peace was laid upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hebrew says by his bruise there is healing to us. You see, not only did Jesus bear the sin of all, but he also bore the sickness of all. Do you see, therefore I submit that God has already made provision for your healing and for everyone who will believe. God has made a legal provision for our healing in his covenant and it's been sealed by the blood of Jesus. And this is his covenant. This is his document that says, I really want to heal you. No doubts, no shadow, no shadow of turning, no changing. Let's look at Jesus' earthly ministry. Jesus was God in action. Jesus himself said, I only do and say what I see my father saying and doing. And it says in Matthew 4, 23, and Jesus was going about in all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every kind of sickness. Every means every among the people. And news went about him into all Syria and they brought to him all who were ill, taken with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them all. You see, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me give you an up-to-date testimony just a few years ago that Jesus Christ is the same today. I was told of a young girl who is in our local hospital in the John Radcliffe. She had already had two surgeries for heart disease. And I had spoken to her before but she said that she couldn't really believe that Jesus wanted to heal her. He might want to heal other people, and he could, but she wasn't really sure he wanted to heal her. Well, anyway, there was an emergency. She was rushed in, and she had a um, third um, lot of surgery on her heart. And the diagnosis, the prognosis was she had a f less than a 50-50% chance of living through this surgery. I received the phone call, our prayer group were praying, and I rushed up to the hospital, and the nurse didn't want me to go in. She said, don't you realize this girl is dying? But the mother overheard, and she said, I know my daughter would want Hillary to go in. So they took me into the intensive care unit where she was. Honestly, she looked as good as dead. She was gray white, she had tubes coming out of her. There was a nurse sitting at the bottom of her bed, and she was fixed up to all sorts of bits of machinery. And I was only given a few minutes. The, the nurse moved away just to stand at the back of the bed. And I put my hands on her foot. It was the only part of her I could get hold of. And I wasn't allowed to pray out loud, but in my heart, I said, I command the spirit of death to leave this girl. And I command healing into her body. And at that moment, they said, I'm sorry, you've got to go. So I left. Do you know she didn't look a scrap better? She looked desperately ill. Let me tell you the amazing thing. That evening I received a phone call to say she was sitting up in bed and she was asking for food and she called for me to go the next day and she said to me, I believe that Jesus wants to heal me. I know it's true without a shadow of a doubt. And the last I heard of her, she was getting married and going to have a baby everything that she hadn't been able to do before Jesus healed her. And so Jesus really, really wants to heal you. Let me just cover another story about the centurion servant. And this is in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13. As you know, um, this centurion loved his servant 
and it says that his servant was grievously tormented. He was sick with a palsy. And um, the, the centurion came and said, please heal my servant. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And then the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And he explained, I'm a man under authority, with authority, and I tell this man to go, and he goes. I tell this man to come, and he comes. And he said that um, if I tell my servant to do something, he does it. You see, this man really understood authority, and he understood that Jesus has authority over all sickness and all disease and over every torment. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said, you know, I truly, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in all Israel. And then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. And it says in that very hour, the servant was totally healed. Jesus healed from a distance with a word. You see, God's word to you is, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. Healing is flowing to you. And I want us to make a response to what God has done through Jesus Christ. I want you to look steadfastly, see Jesus on the cross. You will be healed tonight. I want you to stand up if you are able. Sit if you are not able to stand. Raise your hands up to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking my sins and my sicknesses. I ask you to heal my body. And I'm going to speak a word of command. And as I speak that word of command, healing will go into your body and sickness will leave it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command sickness and infirmity and disease and torment and pain to leave your body now. In the name of Jesus, I loose healing into your body in his name. Now receive it by faith. Say, thank you, Lord, for healing my body. Amen. Keep the switch of faith turned on. What do I mean by that? I mean, keep saying, thank you, Lord, for healing my body. Remember when Jesus spoke and said to the centurion, your servant is healed, there was no physical evidence in front of that centurion, but he believed and he went his way. Believe that the healing power of God has been put into your body right now and it is working a sign and a wonder and a miracle and it will continue working as long as you say, Lord, thank you for healing me. Thank you for healing me. I promise you, according to the word of God, it will manifest in your body and never forget. You may say, Lord, if you really want to heal me, you can. And Jesus' reply to you is, I really want to heal you. Praise God.